Hello there, welcome to Target Radio's podcast with me, Cookie. Every single week we uh, find different people to speak to, mainly musicians, artists in the unsigned realm of music. And what we do, we have a chat with them, find out a little bit more about them, and obviously explore their music. Now, if you are listening to uh, this on iTunes, please, if you get a chance, uh, give us a five-star rating if you can. And please make sure you put some comments in there as well. If we're doing something right, that's great. But if we're not doing something as good and you think we could do something better, then please do leave us a message. Let us know. And if you want anything else in the podcast, again, let us know in the comments box. That will be brilliant. Okay, thank you then. Today we've got a brilliant artist. Have a listen to this. Every Monday night... We'd like to say that, in our opinion, it is not suitable for children... Every Monday night... Or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition... Every Monday night... And every Monday night... Then we have a super sound DJ... Sean Cook... Good people, it is my pleasure to present to you... Sean Cook... The one and only... Sean Cook... (laughs) Hello, hello, and welcome to the show... Hello, 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 welcome to the show... Now, for those of you watching in black and white, this one is in Technicolor. Stand by for action! Oh, Sean Kirk. Eventually. Okay, yes, I had to kick the computer. And guess what? I hurt me toe. But I got it working! Hooray! Anyway, how was your weekend? Mine was great up until about 6 o'clock this evening. And for the last 17 minutes, I've been sweating profusely. Anyway, I hope your weekend was nice. Mine weren't bad, actually. Went out to see a, a brilliant movie called Yesterday. That was two days ago, though. I'm confused now already. All about the Beatles, or should we say all about not the Beatles, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say no more. Great film, though. Go and watch it. Uh, went out Friday evening... Yeah, done a gig or two. Well, one, actually. And then Sunday afternoon, done a gig as well. Honestly, it's gigging season at the moment. Anyway, back on the wireless this evening. Of course, the Motley crew are here. That would be Andy, a top walker, the head of the Motleys, along with a Ruby Roo, who's going to be doing the birthdays very shortly after she's eating her chicken nuggets. And a very special guest this evening playing nothing but Oasis, so Mr. Johnny Blaze is in there again. Honestly, I think I think he just stayed behind. The last time he was here, he was so popular. So uh, Johnny's going to be doing some uh, Oasis, a little history of the Oasis as well. Even though they weren't together that long in the media eye, we're going to find out a little bit more about the first three albums. Looking forward to that. And if you've got a special request... Or a dedication. You know what to do. Yeah, don't bother us with them. Anyway, more music than you can shake a stick at. Hopefully in the next sort of hour and, uh, well, minutes. And of course, we're starting off the show this evening with always, always, always The Who. But for this uh, show and up until the 25th of April. Oh, sorry, April, August. What was I looking at April for? Uh, August of this year, it is the August Mod Bank uh, weekend holiday doobie what's it? But we're also celebrating 40 glorious years, go on, count them while we're listening to this, of Quadrophenia being released. And this is where it gets confusing now, because from 1973, here's The Who with The Rock. Okay, it's your turn now, Ruby. It's birthday time, and if you are having your birthday today, happy birthday, we'll give you a little mention if you're on the Facebook but first and most importantly, let's have a look at the, uh, well, the rich and famous. Yes, I know, I can see it now. So, who's having his birthday today, then? Joey Essex. I wonder if he realises it's his birthday. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry, but I don't think Joey Essex is as, uh, as silly as he makes out he is. If he is... No, good now. Oh, good now. Well, I don't know. Right, OK, so uh, Joey Essex having his birthday today. And uh, who else 
Will Wheaton. And for those who know who Will Wheaton is, he was in uh, My Guy, I believe, and something else, something else. But most importantly, he was in Star Trek Next Generation. Most annoying in that, actually. Country singer, who's that? Martina McBride. Lovely, lovingly put. Now, this guy here actually looks like Ozzy Osbourne, but it's not. It's... Jedi Lee. He's a rock singer. And a soap opera actress. Um, no, we're not even going to mention her, are we? Go on, go, have a go. Genesis Rodriguez. Yeah, it sounds great to me. I think you could do it better than me. And I think that's it for the uh, rich and famous. Uh, not so many birthdays today, unfortunately. So uh, it's over to today then. Who's having their birthday today? Then it's... Sam Over. And Sam Over, lead guitarist with the... Uh, well, they split up now, but the Regents. Great guitarist, actually. Next. Ben Taylor. Happy birthday to you, Ben. Only 29. <laughs> young man. Next one we've got... John Pyle. And he's a young man as well, 68. And next... Jeanette Shea. Close enough. And she's a lovely 51. OK, last one for today, then, uh, for today's birthday is... Claudio Catania. Only because you've practised it. <laughs> and recent birthdays, then, uh, the last couple of days or so. So go, let's go for them quickly, then. Josephine Black Eagle. And... Um, Silas Johnson. Silas. Silas Johnson. And next... Mark Whitehouse. And next... Kerry Bennett. And... Anthony Beaumont. 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 Yeah, well, we'll get there in the end. Uh, two more then. Roger Newis and Connie Ellison. Oh, great. If you are having your birthday today, we've not given you a mention. Why? Come on, sort yourselves out. It's your birthday. Thank you very much indeed, Ruby. And uh, I'll see you later, and we'll get packing, shall we? Okay, welcome to Target Radio Podcast, and we're doing a little bit in the middle of our podcast from now on in. With me now, I've got Andy Top Walker. Yeah, mods and more. Well, we've done, we've decided that because our friend Curly passed away earlier on this year, yeah, we wanted to do something very special in his memory. So what we've decided to do is team up with the help of the AIM, and that's Grant Bell and Jamie, Jamie Tongue, Darren J Connett, and the theme being Chris Daly and Paul Basson, gratefully giving us their time to, so I can organise what will be a fantastic evening of music. Uh, including in the evening, we will be having a, um, a raffle. We've had, we've had some very generous donations already, just to name a few. We've get, we're getting some, some donations in from uh, Arcade Clothing. We've got some donations coming in from Bone Clothing, also in Brighton. We've also had some donations from uh, Simon Wells, He's going to be giving us a donation. I'm hoping it's going to be a very, very exciting book that he's just uh, releasing. We've got John Knight has also signed uh, a couple of his, his two books, the Jimmy Mac, the t- uh, Jimmy Back, and the Jimmy Mac sequel. Uh, also, we've had a donation from Harrington and Scar Mod Clothing, and that's just to name a few. I do know that the one and only Gary Shale has also said that he will give us something. Uh, five four three two one Clothing have actually been kind enough to. Basically, they've donated one of their pin badges, and if my memory serves me correct, it's a, it's a pin badge of a lady sitting on a scooter. They will donate 25 pence from every pin that they sell. So if you go on to, if it ain't mod, it ain't me, look them up, they'll be there, Go on to the, click onto their link, buy a badge, you'll be donating 25p. If you go on to Mods and More, same thing, click onto their link, 25p. Andy, how are you? Well, I'm good, thanks, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. And you're nice and loud today, fortunately. Must be the sun, summer sun. It must be the summer sun. It must be the summer sun. It's got to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how was your weekend? It was superb, thank you. Yes, Brilliant. What Yours? Did you, what did you do? Hang on, what did you do? What did we do? Uh, well, just relaxed on the Saturday, to be honest with you. Yep. And Sunday we decided that we were going to go up to Brighton and say hello. To, say hello. Say oh, 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 oh. To the South Coast. How many did you have? <laughs> 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 so you went up to the Modern World Cafe? Yes, we went up to the Modern World Cafe. Oh. Spent a bit of time with Neil Sykes and Stacey. Yes, indeed. Oh, lovely. And did you see Bowie, little Bowie? Oh, mate, he's great. I know. He's, he's so big. He is. They've got to stop feeding him. <laughs> and for those who don't know what we're talking about, tough. Right, now, uh, behind me, which is really rude, actually. I've got my back to him, haven't I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> again, yes. Yeah. So I've got to sort this studio out. 
So we can have special guests. I can actually see them. I like to see the whites of their eyes, Andy, you see. <laughs> <laughs> We've got none other than Johnny Blaze. Hey, Johnny, how are you doing? I'm very well, mate. Thank good, good, you. good. Yeah, not too bad. All excited and giddy now because it's holiday time. Hello. So we're offering uh, a couple of weeks here on the show, but we thought, well, why not, Andy? Let's have a musical entourage uh, to finish off, uh, well, a really, we're really busy period of time out here at Target Radio of all the guests that you seem to keep throwing at me. Sorry. That's all right. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> Bring brilliant. So uh, thank you very much to every single guest. And we thought, well, we'll have a live one tonight. And we've got Johnny Ablaze with us. So, Johnny, now, it was your idea, your concept of this, because obviously yeah. we don't do a lot of, should we say, Brit pop. I think that's the terminology, even though they're, they're not really pop. What you're going to be playing this evening, are you? Um, they're not pop, are they? Well, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a nod to uh, the, the boys on the wall, isn't it? The Who, the, the Stones and all that kind of thing. And they brought it all together in one band, I think. Yeah, and, yeah. And as they're quite big at the moment, both Noel and Liam, uh, you know, respectively. And Oasis are on the back in the charts and all that kind of thing. So I thought, you know what? I've always wanted to play Oasis on the, on the radio. Yeah. So I thought I'd ask Mr. Sean Cook. Oh, and there, I am. there you <laughs> so there go. You go. Yeah, he asked loads of others first, and they all said no. <laughs> oh, no, sure. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me here now. So. Oh, brilliant, lovely. Now, keep keep sort of like your mouth on the microphone. Oh, keep fading uh, in and out. Can you not hear me? I can, change, oh, I can hear it? you quite well, but uh, and then you go... Then you come I'm back again. No, I've, got a, I've got a swivel chair, that's what it is. I know, I put you on a fixed chair and you didn't want that. I know. It's I know, I had to go and get a swivel chair. and Oh, for goodness sake. So, Oasis then, obviously you mentioned a few bands there, but you forgot the Beatles, because obviously they've come compared themselves uh, as a sort of second generation of Beatles, or well, yeah. am I completely wrong? No, it was Oasis Mania, wasn't it? it yeah. Was, uh, it was indicative of the Beatles. They went to Japan first, Yep. and it was crazy. I mean, they'd only been together, what, you know, a year probably. properly. Yeah, Song yeah. by creation. Mm-hmm. But originally they were called The Rain, and Liam was uh, their singer, who asked to be the singer. Noel was, in, uh, was on a tour with the Inspiral Carpets as a roadie. Literally just getting drunk and high and setting up guitars and drums. And why and he not? Comes back to Manchester to find his brother, who never expressed an interest in music, uh, to find he's in a band. Yeah, and he yeah. Went to his mum's house. Where's Liam? He's rehearsing. <laughs> Doing what? <laughs> He's in a band. He's in a band. He's in a what? He's in a what? A band. He's, in a what? Yeah, he's, he's a singer. He's a singer. <laughs> oh so he went to sing and goes, but you're awful. But yeah. uh, you definitely got something as a front man. So he goes, I've got loads of songs you fancy taking on the world. That's long and short of it. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, the books are available. There are books available <laughs> if you care to read, or you can just yeah. listen to the history with us here at Target Radio. So well, yeah, that, that, was, that was long and short of it. Alan McGeer missed his train home. He went to catch a local band who yeah. were a girl group, I believe. Ah, uh, right. And they invited Oasis up from Manchester, and they filled a van with loads of their friends and equipment. Turned up, and the guy's like, you're not supposed to be playing here tonight. No. And the legend has it that they were like, look, there's 17 of us here, yeah. and there's two of you on the door. So you give us give us half an hour, otherwise we're going to smash the gap up. <laughs> <laughs> As they like to put it. And you know what they're like, do you know what I mean? You know what they're like. Yeah, oh yeah, you're never upset a Mancunian, especially when they want exactly. to play music. You know, but they had a hard upbringing, you know. They mm. used to beat them and come back in drunken rages and yeah. all this kind well, of thing. Well, the boys things, have done so. good, haven't they? Let's be yeah, fair. I mean, I know they had their uh, on and off screen battles yeah. and uh you know that one minute they're loved by the press and the next minute they're hated by absolutely everyone yeah. but uh, how i look at it in the media sort of sense form mm. um uh, if you're not getting mentioned whether it's good or bad or ugly then you're not getting mentioned so they actually done something really really creative here they were good and they were bad in the same sort of sentence but they were getting mentioned in the media so exactly. you know they could do no wrong they could they? do no wrong really yeah. they could walk on water the pair of the boys exactly. you know the, the, the boys themselves now obviously who who's the sort of one that you don't really want to meet down a dark alley which one is it Oh, I don't care. You don't I'll care. Spot Liam out easy. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that. I'm he sure he's listening. Out, but he's about three, four inches shorter than me, and uh, there we yeah, go. A couple of clouts he'll be out. But, there we go. No, there I'd we like go. to meet no. uh, Liam more than Noel, to be honest. These oh, days, really? I think he's got a bit of a messiah complex these days, Noel. Mm, I mm. think he's gone into himself, and and uh, I think he don't like the fact that Liam's Parker monkeys, as he like to call them, <laughs> are, uh, are taking on the world again. But either or. <laughs> I'll have a beer with them. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I think we'd all like to have a beer with them. Only one, though. My goodness me. Can you imagine them on a few? I don't think you can have one beer with the Gallagher brothers, mate. No, no, I don't think you're allowed. No, no, <laughs> I, th- so... I think it's somewhere uh, law is written. What do you think, Andy? Exactly. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'd love to be there. But, oh, it'd be great fun, wouldn't it? I'd be a fly on the wall, actually. Yeah, I'm trying there. to be good these days, so meeting those two for a pint wouldn't be the best idea. Absolutely. Right, so, uh, Johnny, uh, you're going to be playing a song in a second. Uh, yeah. I just want you to wave now to everyone on Facebook Live, because we are now on Facebook Live. So, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It'd be nice to uh, have your company on here the radio. this evening. You're, yeah. you're on the wireless? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It was wireless earlier, because we couldn't get no signal. For goodness sake, what's all that about? Right, there. so we're going to do... Uh, is it going to be a sort of a chronological order of music that we're playing I this evening? I tried that, yeah. I mean, this is one's, this one's for my mate Simsy. Okay. Chris Sims, who's... Uh, and Andy Topwalker, sitting in the corner there. He said Supersonic <laughs> straight away, so... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I've had a couple more requests for this. This is the first single. Okay. Supersonic, which they wrote in the studio. Well, Noel wrote in the studio. Mm-hmm. They were originally supposed to record Bring It On Down, which is the seventh track off. Uh, definitely, maybe. Okay. But the drummer couldn't get the timing right. <clears throat> so he went back uh, 45 minutes later, come out whenever in a, in a Chinese. Yep. And As said, you do. Uh, As you do. Yeah, and there was a dog underneath the uh, the desk called Elsa. And uh, and it had done his awful farts. So the lyrics were, I know a girl called Elsa, she's into Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> it's like the dog's been at the Alka-Seltzer again. Oh, no. So it just come out of nowhere. And, um, yeah, that's the beauty of it. I think that's one of my favourites. Fantastic. Of that reason, yeah. I love these little stories. You, know, you don't get know. to hear these stories often. Uh, I have actually heard that story before. But, you know, if you just sort of browse in and out of Oasis, listen to the music, but not really pay a lot of interest into the history of it, you yeah. wouldn't hear these fantastic little clips and snippets of real sort of like, yeah. um, not, not very useful. <laughs> Useful information, but really entertaining. So if that you're is into, really you're good. Into it, aren't you? Absolutely. Sort of yeah, they, they, they resonate. Well, definitely. well, when they first came out, I'll be honest with you. I thought, who are these lot? I don't even like them. They're loud, obnoxious, and generally they grew on you. They really did grow, grow like on a you. Fun guy. They, they are. They, they they're are. Fun they're... guys as well. <laughs> right, we're gonna have enough chat. I think. I think we're gonna pass the uh, guitar, the mantle, and of course the music over to Johnny. A uh, blaze there. He's yeah, going to play Supersonic. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Let's give him a big round of applause. Thank Come on. Woo! It goes like this. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, uh, look at you. Look at you, Mr. Oasis. That's brilliant. I've been playing that song for uh, 18 years, mate. So... You, you sort of know. Um, you, you sort of know what you're doing now. By then, <laughs> yeah, I'm still not quite there. I'm like ah. tucking a little bit of their personalities uh, vocally. You know what I mean? That's it. He's, he's already stuck his song, fingers up at me. A song, you no. know. It's not my song, so I'm not going to sing it like my song. So a little bit here and there, but yeah, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Did doing you notice he stuck two fingers up at me halfway through that as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. very, very, very uh, Gallagher wasn't it? That's doing it when you got a guitar in your hand and making <laughs> the other. Yeah. Oh, oh, so it wasn't your fingers, right? Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> What's the making fuse of the amazing John? Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. That sounds yeah, so mate. good. Now, <clears throat> my apologies to whoever lost a little bit of our. Uh, your performance there because we did go off air just very very briefly. I have no idea why, but we're back on now. We're I strong. See you panicking, yeah. I know we're all panicking here. I know no idea why. Yeah. Um, I think it's something to do with uh, the other end. It's nothing to do with us. We are broadcasting loud and proud. Unfortunately, we did lose you just for a short while there. Okay, welcome to Target Radio Podcast. And we're doing a little bit in the middle of our podcast from now on in. Um, Basically, just to uh, advertise a couple of uh, special events that are coming your way very soon. With me now, I've got Andy Top Walker, who's uh, helping with the March of the Mods, which is Saturday the 21st of March. Uh, 2020, so that's next year. Uh, kick starting off at one o'clock all the way through till 1 a.m. Andy, 12 hours, mate. That's a long time. 12 hours of wonderful music. It's going to be wonderful music. So, who's appearing on March of the Mods 2020 at the Holroyd Arms? That's in Guildford. It's in Guildford, and I'm pleased to announce that from the Chords UK, we actually have Chris Pope. Wow. And he's going to be doing an acoustic set for us. Okay, that sounds good. We also have the aim for the Spirals, the Sonics. Who else we got? Then we've got the Modern Apes. And then we have followed by, we have, it's great to, to announce that the Trojan Beats are actually going to be there as well. We also have the 48Ks. There. Now They're, that is a great band. Absolutely. So looking forward to hearing them. Fantastic. Them. A, a new up-and-coming young band called the Lightscopes. And anything else? And then we're having a bit of a Q and a, Q and, a, Q and a session. Going Question on. and answers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with mod zines. Ah, now is that something to do with one Eddie Pillar? I believe it is. Wow. Now we're we going to be asking questions to Eddie. 
No, I believe he's going to be asking the questions to some very special guests. Oh, the great Eddie Pillar live on the stage area of March of the Mods 2020. And that's on the 21st of March at the Holroyd Arms. Target Radio, we're going to be recording the whole event live. Brilliant. And how do we get tickets, please? You can, if you go on to, uh, sorry, if you go on to Mods and More, that we've got an advert going up there. Just click on the link and that takes you directly into the tickets. Brilliant. You can also do the same, obviously, here on Target Radio. Click onto the link, take you directly into the tickets. And also, on most of the great Facebook pages that are out there that have actually offered to promote this great cause. That is fantastic. Brilliant stuff. And uh, the how much how much does the tickets cost? The, t- the tickets are £10 in advance, and if you if you if you're lucky enough to turn up on the day, and there are still availability, yep. it's fifteen pound on the door. Brilliant, excellent. Right, okay. So that's March of the Mod, Saturday, the twenty first of March, twenty twenty. Kick starts at one p.m. Don't be late. Don't be late. Okay, and you're going to look great. Uh, bring a change of clothes because you're going to get hot and sweaty in there. Going right the way through till one o'clock in the morning. Do you think you can do twelve hours? Right, so in summer of 1992, Oasis are formed after Paul Bonehead Arthurs and Paul Giggsy McGuigan and Tony McCarroll ask Liam Gallagher, as you said, to join their band Rain. And he suggested a name change. Later, his brother Noel was invited to join. He said he will, but only if he can be boss. Is that right? That's pretty much it, yeah. Because he had the songs, uh, he's, you know, on the, on the road with yeah. the spiral carpets and just penning songs and yeah, having a yeah. good time. And it reflects in... In the first album, you yeah. know, Cigarettes and Alcohol, Rock and Roll Star, Live Forever. So I think he already had the idea there. Yeah, But indeed. he needed someone like Liam to come along and, and shout from the rooftops, basically, yeah. what it was about. And, and he did a pretty good job, I think. Fantastic. Without, and obviously, one without the yeah. other wouldn't work. Absolutely, no, no. One one sort of like uh, fed off each other, didn't they, really? Yeah, you know, to be yeah. fair. So the first single, Supersonics, you just heard here on Target Radio, reached number 31, just number 31 in the charts, which is really surprising because it is actually an iconic song, isn't it? It is. I mean, the, at the time, though, you had a load of uh, Acid House at the, the tail end of that, and then you had this, uh, this really kind of bleak period where nothing came out. It was it very was, dull, wasn't it? Pop, yeah, it was you know, music was very dull. Pop stuff and Boyzone and all sorts. So when yeah, it came yeah. out, people were, we like this, yeah. uh, and then hence th- number thirty one on the charts. A lot of bands at the time wouldn't wouldn't even touch that. They'd take about you know two three years to get on the radio. Absolutely, so, yeah. So it was like yeah. refreshing, and because it was so simple, the way it was you know written, you yeah, know, it was just refreshing to have someone to come along and say something, even though the, some of the lyrics are nonsense. Yeah, but it yeah. was the directness of it, and it made you feel like you could be anything when you were nothing mm, do you know what I mean mm. the way they come across in general well right? absolutely I mean obviously they compared themselves to the great site the Beatles and stuff and you yeah. listen to some of the Beatles records um, some of the stuff really really didn't make any sense at all no, I am the walrus I mean what's that all about I know I mean, it, it, I it, mean it, is he some sort of Aquarian seal or something you know I what's know. that all about I think it was to do with their recreational behaviour at the time uh, absolutely I and think uh, to them it was like the, uh, the ingredients of a coffee <laughs> sort of like a coffee mug or something actually you know I, mean? I don't think they were very well they no, were all on these, uh, yeah. yeah, they were all on these pills. I think they all had headaches. Yeah. So <clears throat> in August 1994, then back to Oasis, mm-hmm. yeah. Live Forever became the band's first mm. top 10 single. First album, definitely maybe, was released. So we're going to get back to you in a few seconds' time. Yeah. Uh, I thought we'd play this. Now, this is actually re- redone, and it was re-released in 2007. Have a listen to this. Oh, there we go. Wilson Pickett there in the midnight hour. And the way the show's going tonight, um, you know, it might be until the midnight hour, Andy, before we can actually get a secure signal. Now, I do apologise. We are sort of dropping in and out of our broadcasting tonight, which is a real shame because we've got a brilliant artist in with us today, haven't we? We have indeed. So, so please stick with us. Yeah, please stay with us and uh, we'll do our very best. We'll keep okay. kicking the computer. So, uh, Johnny Blaze, hello. Hello. Yeah, you just played Supersonic, which was Mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant. And uh, obviously going through the timeline then. So, uh, in uh, Mm -hmm. August of 94, um, the band's top 10 single was Live Forever Mm -hmm. from their first album, Definitely Maybe. So, uh, what are you playing next? Uh, It's called Whatever. Uh, well, how rude! Uh, was, is that from the first album then? No, yeah, no, no. It was uh, just between "Definitely Maybe" and "Morning Glory." It was actually a Christmas single. It reached number three in the charts. See, he knows more than he knows more <laughs> than what I do. Obviously, well, you guys you know. are who guys, aren't you? So, uh, who? Uh, yeah, exactly. Who? <laughs> ah. Definitely, maybe. Definitely. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, oh, the there we go. Yeah, I oh, that. I don't know. <laughs> all these, all these uh, male testosteronic, uh, yeah. you know. 
oh, he's his quotes going around, you know, in here. It's unbelievable. I might um, just sit back now and uh, enjoy this next one. So, um, tell us a bit more about the story, uh, sorry, the uh, song before you play it. Um, yeah, it's a Christmas song. Yeah. Uh, between, uh, definitely, maybe, Morning Glory. Number three in the charts. Recorded in the White Room, the music video. And uh, Noel turned up. He fell asleep, fallen asleep in a bus stop. What, uh, fa- it was found by his manager asleep in a bus stop. He's like, you've got to go and do a video here. <laughs> so in the video, he's eating McDonald's, funny enough, because your son gave me some chicken nuggets earlier, right? That's it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was eating McDonald's, and the camera pans around, and he's got these chips he's stuffing in his face. And Liam, <laughs> Liam didn't like it, so he started... Uh, See his face the whole way through the video just wasn't happy, and Noel was Noel was uh, Noel was quite happy with his hangover. So. Uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> man! Yeah, no, great song. Uh, but sounds like the Beatles. Uh, sounds a bit Christmassy as well. Yeah, indeed. And you've had a chicken McNugget, so you're really into it now, aren't you? Yeah, I want another nineteen. That, that's <laughs> it. Well, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can get a Deliveroo here or something. Oh, right, that, <laughs> here we go. There we go. Right, uh, big hand, then, please, for Mr. Johnny Blaze. Thank you very much. Oh, that, absolutely brilliant! Yeah, I like that one. It goes down well at parties, all that. Absolutely. Do you, do you get to play a lot of Oasis, though, when you're out on the road? Uh, yeah. I get a lot of requests for it because um, they're like, oh, your music, your music sounds like Oasis. Do you know any Oasis? I'm like, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and my ears have been uh, fully open for the last 20 years. Yes, yes. You, you know, <clears throat> Oasis? Oasis who? <laughs> I know. It's really, really big again at the, at the moment. It's like I'm reliving my youth. Seeing yeah. them all over Facebook and on TV and there's DVDs out. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Are we live here? Uh, yeah, we are live. Yeah, we're Excellent. still live. Yeah, no um, problems at all. <laughs> where it all started was where my dad took me to see uh, Oasis at uh, Wembley Stadium. Oh, right. Okay. And they've done two nights. Yeah. And we were at the one that was good and the one that came out on DVD. Now, there's about three... DVDs of their gigs that came out in the shops. Yeah, and I was at one of them, and it, oh. that told me something that day. There, and it did. Yeah, it you, you were you were you were destined to come onto Target Radio and play Oasis tracks yeah, for, for the masses. Yeah, so, took, yeah, yeah, indeed. Let's go back then to 1995. Then, and uh, not that we uh, watch it now because it is a no. pile of pants, but uh, Oasis collect a Brit Award for the best newcomers. Yes, doesn't seem that long ago, but it is 1995. Come on, 25 years ago. 25, really. almost 25 years. Next year it'll be 25 year anniversary I of them collecting that, that Brit Brits. Awards, yeah, because um, they went up to collect it, and Liam went up and said something. I'd like to thank all the people. And he done this kind of blurish kind of Essex accent. Yeah. And then he went, oh, the people. <laughs> and then, um, and then uh, Michael Hutchins, another year, gave him a Brit Award. And then Liam pretended to stick it out of his bum. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, words to that effect. Obviously, we kept it nice and radio friendly. Yeah, there. sorry about That's that. That's okay. No, you're behind. all right. You're okay. <laughs> That's if you're eating your dinner, don't worry behind. about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, in April of 1995, yeah. then, just uh, we're going with a chronological, uh, chronological order, the drummer Tony McCarroll leaves the band. Yes. Why? Because he wasn't capable of, uh, of the sort of the drumming that needed to be done. You yeah. Know, he'd done some might say off Morning Glory, and he yeah. got a payout of 175 grand, I think. Uh, shortly after that. Wow. But, uh, it was just, he couldn't even do Bring It On Down. No. Now, Alan no. White was in a studio uh, next door, yeah. and his brother plays with Paul Weller, I believe. That's it, there's your connection. Alan, Steve White, Alan White, the brothers. They are indeed, yeah, yeah. so brothers. So, um, and I was like, he's like, I'm having that drummer there. So, so he sort of goes next door, and <laughs> the, the legend has it. See, with the races, you know, you, you'd like to believe the hype and, and the fact that that, that went on, but yeah. I don't disbelieve it in, in the same breath, you know. Because that's Indeed. what they like. You know, I want that drum. I'm going to have him. Absolutely. So, so what was. they wanted, they went and got. Exactly, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I really. thought. I think there were some negotiations involved there and some paperwork and stuff like that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in you know, out, out of all the sort of like uh, the solicitors and all the uh, other people that make lots of money, mm-hmm. um, yeah, generally, they just went, well, I'm pointing to him, I'm having him, and they got him. So uh, exactly. Alan White was a replaced... Uh, sorry, uh, replace Tony McCarroll in yeah. April of 1995. Then in October of the same year, what's the story then? Morning mm. Glory, their second album is released. And it goes where? Straight to number one in just a week. Exactly. So there we go. So A little fact about it. Yeah, go for they, it. They've got uh, all their albums went straight to number one. Not even the Beatles did that because Please Please Me went to number two. 
So wow. they'll be more than made up with that fact, I'm oh. sure. But uh, yeah, that's a little fact there for you. You're in that- a Guinness Book of Records for that. Wow. Now, that's something we'd like to uh, obviously uh, discover and uh, explore here. Yeah. And uh, that is brilliant. I'm so sorry to Mike Thompson if he's tuning in because I know Beatles is his favourite, <laughs> favourite all time go to oh, band. Um, it, I'm sure. oh, I'm, it, you'll get over it, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so in February of 1996, okay, um, they win three. Count them one, two, three. Best band, best album, and best video for Wonderwall. Yeah, it wasn't all that. I mean, it's a bit weird. It starts off, uh, a clown walks in, puts the record player on. Yeah. They all sit around. Liam looks like he's got the ump. They play the fruit machine and they play a bit of pool and throw some darts. Yeah. And that was it. Indeed. Make it in black and white and that was it. One best video. But any Fantastic. band at the time had a good song out, the, the video came with it. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. If you're going to win best song, best album, you're going to get the best video. Who do they use for their videos, though? Who do they? Uh, Mark, something, Mark. There we go. Put him on the. Put him on the. Put him on the. Uh, Paolo Hewitt did the photography. I know that. Yes. He worked yeah. with a lot of people like of the same. Milk. Well, Paolo Hewitt just up the road here in Woking. And, yeah, um, local you know, lad. Yeah, local yeah. lad. And uh, what school, Paul? What the? Jill Fermanovsky. There That's he is. Did it. There he is. I, I dug that out. That's a hard surname to say as well. Absolutely. It must be the Coca Cola. The Coca Cola is working. That is brilliant. Yeah. We we give the hard stuff here at Target Radio. <laughs> right. Obviously, other <laughs> colas are available now. Um, we've had quite a few requests uh, throughout the last couple of weeks when we first um, explored this idea of you coming in and playing huh? nothing but Oasis. So, what's your next song then? Well, as we touched on Morning Glory, I'm gonna have to play Wonder Woman, and it's your your request. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I do like this one. It's a really good. I mean, obviously, being a mobile DJ, it's one of those go-to songs, especially to liven up crowds and obviously to uh, finish off an evening as well, especially yeah. if there's a load of guys. If it's not it's, sort of a wedding or something like that. that, it is a really a blokey song, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, at the parties and weddings and stuff, you get the girls up for doing the macarena and all sorts and all that. But do, then, do you know, 30 years I've been playing that and I still don't know the moves to it. Yeah, the, I'll turn me back on them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got their first two albums. I've lost interest after that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. like, yeah, a wedding or a sort of party or something. Then uh, you play a bit of Oasis, and the lads are up. They're at the bar. You know what I mean? They're singing yeah. along, and then all of a sudden, you've got guys and girls on the dance floor. Oh yeah, I mean, the girls oh, I do the like a bit of Wonder anyway. Wall. No, I've never done the Macarena in my oh, life. Oh, give me that, Sean. No, I've never, never done, done it. I've never done it in my life. No. My daughter will no. be listening. She'll be like, I know that Macarena. I bet she does. <laughs> I mean, I struggle with oops upside your head. I'm all right getting down. It's getting up again now at my age. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Enough from me. More from you now, Johnny, and you're going to be playing my pick now, which is yeah. Wonderwall, which I'm really looking forward to hearing this one. I'm so really, I'm looking forward to playing it, actually. Excellent. I, I used to try and avoid this, but everybody I've heard play it plays it a little bit sort of uh, wooden, and it's supposed to swing. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, that is absolutely... As well I know, my yeah. wife came out, my daughter came out, and they're all giving it a bit of a, you know, a bit of a oomph in the uh, garden yeah. there, my goodness me. Off their feet, doesn't it? it does. And it's it, not quite a wedding. It, no, it's brilliant. Now, uh, I'm going to sort of, I don't know we're on a timeline here, but when did this controversy, this, um, uh, how can we say, between two bohemian bands, which was obviously one being Oasis, which we're listening to this oh, yeah. evening, and Blur. Yeah. Now, they were going for the number one spot, weren't they? Yeah, it was uh, Country House and Roll With It. And now, I've heard from the Oasis camp, I say Oasis camp, the books I've read, that um, a lot of uh, Roll With It singles got released without a barcode and didn't actually register onto the, the chart. But I think that's just them throwing their toys out the pram because they got beaten to number one. Spot. But <laughs> I think that they, uh, the Blur won the battle, but Oasis won the war, as it were. Yes. Uh, but uh, no, Bl- I mean, Blur, I mean, amazing. Like some of their albums, 13, Part Life and all sorts. Yeah, definitely. Yes, of course, yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah no, they, they, they were no comparison at the time. In, in the way they come across and stuff. People needed something to believe in. I think the Oasis were like that. And, the, you know, that, that Park Life and all that, they were Essex boys, and they, they were a bit posher than they let on. And they tried to sort of get down to the grassroots with all the, you know, the, I was going to say the... Yes. Uh, the, 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 pickers, beep. Uh, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd be the, beep button ready. They, they, uh, they came down a, li- a level to sort of sell records in a, in a way without, without quoting me like that. But you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they got hold of the, um, the working class hero type thing. 
Yeah, I think oh, so as well, well. because um, they definitely put Manchester on the map, though, didn't yeah. they, really? I mean, uh, you know, there, are, there have been lots of bands coming up from up north, like, you know, I mean, like uh, with Pulp, obviously, from Sheffield, yeah. which is not that far away. Um, they and did right off the back of that. Well, well the thing is, thing, yeah, yeah, I was about to say that as well, because with Pulp, uh, they would have been going since uh, the early part of the 80s. A lot of people didn't realise that. Mm. And um, they were just about to disband. And then, obviously, along came, like, this Brit pop invasion, obviously, yeah. I think led by the mod farm. Of, uh, Mr. Weller, obviously, he found his uh, writing mojo again. Yeah, he obviously, Oasis. Again, didn't yeah, he, he picked up his guitar. Him, yeah. Oasis were out there smashing it up, and uh, literally. Uh, and then, obviously, the sort of like the, the shall we say the uh, the record fight to number one with Blur and Oasis, and obviously, as you said, uh, Blur just picked them at the post, whether that yeah, was I mean, or no. Who knows? Went on to sell 14 million. Of course, uh, it is. It's, it's obviously creeping up now. Absolutely. So, so you know, we've, we've um, you know, Pulp, one of my favourites as well uh, from Sheffield, uh, just about to disband, and they brought out that mammoth um, common people, which really sort of like ricocheted them to the top as well. You know, yeah. things were starting to look good in the mid to late uh, 90s, yeah, which were quite time, bleak. It? it was quite bleak, as you said before. So, mm-hmm. you know, we had a few stronghold bands and artists out there, you know, Mr. Weller pretty much leading the way with the Modfather routine. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll give you a little rest now. We're going to say goodbye okay. to Facebook Live. So, Bye! And for those who are still joining us here at Target Radio, uh, thank you very much indeed. And I thought we'd just play this one and give Johnny uh, a headache. Here we go. We're talking about Oasis here. And with us here today, we've got none other than the mighty Johnny Blaze. And uh, he, he, I'll tell you what, he, he's knocking them out of the park, Andy. He is indeed. Man. Indeed. Every minute of Cheers, boys. Oh, I'll tell you what, they're really, really good. So let's go back to the timeline then with <laughs> Oasis. So we're up to 1997 now. And both boys marry. Uh, Liam marries Patsy Kensit. Yeah, and of April bigger. of 1997. And uh, do you know, it was uh, Noel Liam's best man? Was he? I don't know, was he? No, I don't think he was. I no. Think he was brother Paul. I think so too. Yeah. And in June of 97, Noel marries Meg Matthews. And who was Noel's best man? Uh, I'm not, uh, Richard hey, Ashcroft, maybe. I think he was, because uh, you yeah. would actually assume that they would be each other's best men, but they weren't. No, well, no, I don't think that's that's a thing for them. I, I don't think they're not the best of friends, are they? So no, no. no. Well, <laughs> the last thing was your brother popping up in the way they were and, and handing over the rings. Me, the what are you doing uh, here? Hey, can you imagine the stag dudes as well? <laughs> oh my goodness! But, yeah, I bet they turn up for each of those. <laughs> and in 1997 of the same year, in August, a very very busy year for the guys. Uh, the third album, "Be Here Now," was released. Yes. Okay, fast so selling debut album of no, no, fast selling album of UK history up until the Arctic Monkeys, I think, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, 175,000 copies in the first week. Wow, there we go. Yeah. Now, something you uh, mentioned before, obviously, you had a little break, and uh, obviously, we played a couple of tracks there. Yeah. Um, that when they released a, an, a, a single, they didn't release just a single with a sort of an instrumental B side. Explain what you, what you were telling us. Well, yeah, I mean, most bands, they will release the single with a remix, with an acoustic version, with a live version, blah, blah, blah. But what they tended to do was fill every single with another three tracks. I mean, you had, uh, some might say, Talk Tonight, Head Shrinker. Yeah. Um, all Around the World, Flashbacks, great tune. They had a cover of David Barry's Heroes on there. Fantastic. Um, you know, uh, Supersonic even, a song called Take Me Away, which I was going to play, but I replaced that with Talk Tonight now. Yeah, indeed. But yeah, um, every, every, uh, every single was filled with, album, with, filled with uh, tracks that made uh, up another album, a B-side album, which reached number two in the charts. Excellent. Uh, which and is not bad. I mean, uh, studio albums, everyone went to number one, but uh, the B-side album went to number two. Okay. But still, for extra tracks, and you wouldn't really expect it from, especially with that, that period, do you know what I mean? No, indeed. It's all about karaoke versions and all those kinds well, of Well, absolutely. Things. And it says something about Oasis, because obviously they have this sort of persona of, like, you know, they hate the world and F you and F this and all of the other oh. bits and pieces, but they really did care about their hardcore fans, and they really did uh, treat them to a lot of, uh, well, should we say... Music that they wouldn't have normally heard. No, exactly. But the thing is, you say that about they, they come across as aggressive and, and all that, but they, their music's quite uplifting. And I mean, for me, they made me feel like I could be anything when I was nothing. Because they're council estate kids, you know? Well, yeah. And they had they, some bad, bad yeah. old guitars, and, and this is literally what I had. My uncle lent me my first guitar. My yeah. Took, took me to my first gig. And uh, there they were, two years later. Liam, Liam was still on the dole, I think. When they played Main Road, he's still living with his mum. <laughs> uh, with his grey tracksuit on. So, oh, yeah, my it's, goodness, it's me. A story yeah. and a half. 
Yeah, and on Monday morning went to sign on. They went, uh, uh you've been working? No. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm signing off. What, you got a job? You go, now I'm a pop star now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll tell you an amusing quick story about, and obviously the connection with Paul Weller again here was uh, Steve Tufty Carver um, was basically in between jobs. And um, he went to sign on, and he signed on literally one week. And then signed off and said he got a job. And they went, oh, fantastic, what are you doing? He said, I'm roadieing for the jam. And they went, I beg your pardon, what's that? Is that a proper job? He went, well, it is now. <laughs> and that's what he'd done for the next sort of seven, eight years with the jam. So he there went roadieing. Go. Yeah, he went roadieing. It's not a bad gig, that roadieing. No, no, it's all right. I mean, no, I mean, he went to see most of the concerts. I think he was actually there for every single concert they've done. So oh, nice. there we go. That's Steve Tufty Carver. And you can catch him on the 11th of this uh, August. Uh, yeah, the 11th of August, which will be a Sunday for his one year, one year one celebration, year one year of the Punk Rock Show, which will feature, <clears throat> you've got it, uh, the jam. Right, okay, now we're featuring the Oasis today, so we mentioned this briefly about B-Sides, you are yeah. going to play one of those now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was going to play Take Me Away, but I don't think it's that well known to, to a lot of his, so I reckon I'll play Talk Tonight, which, by the way, Paul Weller plays uh, Keys on. Ah, right, and straight after uh, that live, one. He did live anyway, it's his yeah. favourite Oasis song. Uh, and also, obviously, he did the lead guitar for the Champagne Supernova on yeah. Morning Glory. So, yeah. uh, as you guys are Who fans and Rod fans, I thought I'd chuck in the talk tonight. You're in so reflection. Kind. There you go. That's right. He's thoughtful. Yeah, if nothing so there, right. he, he's well, thoughtful. Give me two cocoa. It's chicken nugget. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, you know it's a chicken nugget. Yeah, yeah, know, do you know yeah we I'm don't do plurals here. Way, <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's give him a big hand then. Come on, Johnny Blaze! Yeah. Woo! Thank you very much. Oh, fact, that is absolutely yeah. beautiful. What a really lovely song. It's a lovely song, yeah. Abso- yeah do you know, I don't think I've ever heard that one before. Have you, Andy? I have, yes. I you have? have. Oh, yes. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry, yes, sorry yes, I okay. did. It was about... Uh, Nolan left the band and uh, left America, and he flew, flew to uh, Vegas, I think it was. Uh, As you San do. Francisco, actually, because his manager found uh, the last call records from his hotel room. Right. And he met this girl, and hence the lyric, all your dreams are made of strawberry lemonade. Yeah. Because she used to drink this uh, strawberry uh, stuff called Schnapple. Okay. And that's what it was. And uh, she talked him down, talked him out of leaving Oasis, basically. That's so legend has it. Wow, there you so go. There we go. So made a whole record about that. Well, yeah. Fantastic, totally. really. When you think about yeah. it, um, you know, they can make records about absolutely anything. Yep. But they made a record within their own sort of band, which is rather rather unique. Mm. That is very, very clever. And again, a spare track on the Some Might Say single. Yes, uh, indeed. Which is their first number one. Yeah. Brilliant, lovely. Now we have got Johnny Blaze with us. Hi, Johnny, are you back? Yeah, I'm here. Mate. He's I'm there. He's there. He's just tuning up there in the background. Now we are having an Oasis. Um, well, we're just basically doing the first three albums, covering that first, first, yeah. first three sort of like albums. And um, right, so the third album's here, 1997, which yep. is a be here now. Now in March 1999, Oasis agreed. Now obviously that's the band agreed an outer court settlement with a former drummer of Tony McCarroll, yep. who obviously left because he just weren't you know cutting the mustard as he said. Their very own Buddy Rich. Indeed, indeed. And he tries to sue the band for 20% of the royalties. Yeah. I mean, obviously, by the hand of fees, come on. I mean, he got 175 grand, which I can guarantee you isn't 20% of their royalties. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Probably about 0.2% of yeah, their royalties. He walked out there a happy man. I mean, to be yeah. fair, I've watched a lot of documentaries about him, and he was a family man from the very beginning. Yeah. None of the others had, had children, so he had one eye on his family back at home. So when of course, yeah. Going mad and, and he wasn't quite up to it, and he got bullied quite a lot, actually. It was just un- unfortunate mm. within the band situation. Uh, I felt from a bit after seeing, um, uh, what was it, uh, definitely maybe the yeah. documentary for that and, and a couple of others. I felt, felt for him a bit, to be honest, but um, it was, he left when it was right and yeah. he couldn't have made the second album or, on, or indeed the later albums where they started getting a bit throaty with the drumming and, and this backward loops and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So his time had been and gone. So it was it was time for a new. He done he done his thing, yeah, yeah. He he yeah. started off something really, you know, he started off an incredible journey with Oasis. But yeah. as you say, he started doing audiences with now. Oh the right, there you audience. go. Yeah, a Pizza Hut's near you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. He's got to feed the family. Right, so in um, <laughs> April of the same year, 1999, the band go to the south of France to start recording their fourth studio album. Yeah, and of the same the yeah, of the same year in August, uh, Bonehead and uh, Gigsy quit the band. Yeah, there was a squabble over the, some of the roadies got drenched in wine and they just felt like 
it wasn't the same anymore. There was far too much management going on, far yeah. too much do this, do that. Yeah. Uh, I think Noel was fairly, fairly keen to talk to newspapers, and, and it was kind of getting a bit sort of commercial. And yeah. as the leader of the band, as he likes to call himself, uh, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't like it. It lost its romance. And uh, one of um, Noel's key men, I can't remember his name now, it escapes me. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, he, he left the band uh, briefly. I think he came back. But he left the band because it wasn't wasn't the same. Mm. He said once record management got involved and and it got too much money involved, then it lost its romance. I think Nebworth was the uh, pinnacle moment where it was still cool to go to live gigs and actually go and and, and you know enjoy it like that. Indeed, uh, obviously we're just going to backtrack slightly there, going yeah. back to August nineteen ninety six. Uh, Oasis played to one hundred and twenty five thousand fans in yeah. two days at Nebworth. Yeah. So that's the uh, few bits and pieces there. That was apparently I didn't go, but Prodigy with their Ocean Colour scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, Supergrass, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those guys. They're all right, you know. Yeah, they're all sorry about that. Right, they? They're they're all right. <laughs> okay, so uh, we've got another couple of songs from you before we let you. Well, well we release you from the Target Radio dungeons okay. of the studio here. So, um, so what's your penultimate track for us today? Then that means the one before last. This, this is called "Don't Go Away." Okay, we won't then. This is, uh, this is for my missus. Ah, uh, our song. And, G- give her, um, give give her a little mention. Yeah, no, Katie girl, I love you to bits. So ah, oh, there been we go. Through, uh, a lot, and um, yes, you have. Out of the storm at the moment, into the. Into the sunshine, as it were. We're trying to, anyway. Yeah, indeed, a indeed. Problems still, but we'll get there. Absolutely. For those who know, they know. Obviously, we're not going to go on and, about that. And, and for my boy, who's uh, due date the other day. We yes. Lost him fairly early doors, twenty weeks old. So, this is for you guys. Ah, oh, there we go. Beautiful Let's give him a nice little well. round of applause. Come on. Mm-hmm. So I'll just go then. Yeah, just just go for it. Go. Cheers, thank you very much. Ah, oh, that was absolutely Cheers. lovely. Yeah. Brilliant well, stuff. Uh, Simon Routley wants to say, Evening, Sean, great show. Uh, Katie Gill, lots of blue hearts out there for you, my friend. Oh, and Howling Wolf said, you. Great show, Cookie. Thank you, but nothing to do with me. This is to do with my special guest this evening, Mr. Johnny Blaze, or Johnny B now, as we... Uh, yeah, mate. Uh, yeah, Johnny B. I'm We're... hardly ever John these days. It's Blazy, Johnny Blaze. Well, uh, get base. My daughter calls me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We've raised it. We've raised it up to that level. Have we? Get yeah. face. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got another little announcement to make. So I thought we would play this in the background. This is the RAF, and we are the mods. So Andy. Hello. 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 Now, uh, obviously, we are celebrating this year 40 glorious years of uh, Quadrophenia. We are indeed. We are indeed. And obviously, lots of events up and down the country. But obviously, iconically, we are looking to, uh, well, you know, get to Brighton and soak in the atmosphere and, you know, see what's happening down there and things like that, really. That's right. Yeah. um, So, yeah, that's all we're going to say on the matter, I think. Okay. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be down there probably, uh, you know, uh, maybe signing an autograph or two. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe do something, you know, I don't know. So anyway, uh, keep tuned here at Target Radio. Um, that's all we're going to say on it. Uh, that's it. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> Unless you want to add should anything. We, should we give them just a little bit more? Uh, what, do you think they deserve it? Well, should we just say, look out for Sunday. Sunday? Sunday, the bank holiday Sunday. Yeah, that would be the 25th then. That would be the 25th. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, and uh, are we allowed to mention the road? We can we can mention... We can mention many roads, you know. We can mention, mention Oxford we, Street, Regent Street in London. We can mention those. We can mention Madeira Drive. Uh, yeah, where's that? Uh, that's near the Modern World Cafe. The Modern World Cafe? Yeah, yeah. I was at that little establishment that serves great drinks there and uh, nice tasty snacks, Absol- including fish and chips, at very reasonable rates. Absolutely right. And, uh, yeah, Neil and uh, Neil Sykes runs that place, doesn't he, along with that uh, really lovely partner of his. What's her name again? Stacy. Stacy, And they've got that, uh, all that. Uh, oh, they've got a lovely little boy called. Uh, oh, what's his name? Bowie. Bowie or Bowie. Bowie. I'm Bowie. sorry. Sorry, Neil. I said it wrong. You said it wrong. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Now you're going to be. I'm so sorry. So on the 25th, if you want to come down to the Modern World Cafe and watch Andy Top Walker do the washing up, that'll be very, very nice indeed to celebrate 40 glorious years of Quadrophenia. You're doing the washing up now. I'll do some washing you, up. You do. <laughs> but we, we might be listening for a little bit more than that. Though. What listening to you washing up? <laughs> right. Okay. Now. We we have got a watch party going on. Well, we did have because we're just about to come off it. 
There we go, we're off it now because we're going to play this one and then we'll have Johnny Blaze finishing off the show with one more Oasis track, which I'm really looking forward to. So we've spoke about Paul Weller quite a bit during the course of today. Of course, he was part of the sort of um, Brit pop era, you know, where the sort of uh, great music started to come back to us. And I would say mm, 93, 94. Well, this is from 95, 96, and this is The Changing Man. I had to say Woo! And you are listening to Target Radio. Johnny Blaze there! Please Thank you. Today. I've just crashed his own vocals there. Oh, fantastic. Johnny B! Much, Woo! And that's it for a couple of weeks from us here at Target Radio. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves as much as we have here. Uh, a little bit late in going to our next show, but thanks ever so much indeed. One more time. Come on, Johnny Blaze! And we're out of here. Thank you. See you again in a couple of weeks' time. Enjoy yourselves. Don't forget, we have actually got a special show next week. It's a pre-recorded show, and we do have a special guest. How can we do it? Tune in from 6 o'clock next Monday night.